Welcome everyone. In this video, I wanna talk about the right to repair. So I watch a lot of videos about this on YouTube. I subscribe to Lewis Rossman and Unbox Therapy and a couple of others that have talked about it. And I just wanna give my opinion on it. Now, I'm a big Apple fan, or I should say I have been a big Apple fan in the previous years. Um, I have a lot of issues with my, some of my Apple products, not all of them. I love my iPhone 10. Um, I think it's a great phone. My 2017 MacBook Pro is a great laptop other than the keyboard. I have major issues with the keyboard like everyone else does. And Apple wants to take my laptop for five days and fix it. But the fix that they're doing isn't doing any good, so there's no reason for me to send it off. So I just use an external keyboard everywhere I go constantly. So I want to talk about the right to repair because I'm on the fence about it and I want to know your thoughts about it, but understanding the right to repair is hard because I'm, I'm on both sides where I have fixed my own vehicles. I've done repairs on my own electronics before. I've done some iPhone repair, minimal iPhone repair, uh, because I'm not an expert at it. And I think that you should have the right to repair your own stuff that you paid for. Um, the, you know, the iPhone, or I shouldn't say, I shouldn't target this directly at Apple, but Apple is the one that is in the, in the limelight right now of, of pushing people not to be able to buy replacement parts and stuff like that, unless you're an authorized Apple repair shop or dealer or whatever, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so the reason why I'm on the fence about it is because I, I think you should be able to repair the things that you've paid for. You know, like my truck, I've rebuilt the engine in it. I've done, I do the oil changes. I do all that stuff. If I have time and if I think I have the ability to do it. Now, when it becomes a mobile device, like a laptop or cell phone, and getting into more of the cell phones and iPads is even bigger than, you know, repairing a laptop. Um, there's issues with it. And the main reason why there's issues with repairing it is because of the lithium batteries or batteries that they have in them. If they're not lithium, I don't know what else they would be, but just the batteries alone, right? And, you know, Samsung had the issue of the battery, you know, catching on fire, blowing up, doing whatever it was doing. And there becomes a liability on the company when you do your own repair. Now, Apple and some of the others, they're in, a, they're in business to make profit. But, and I think that's their main driving factor to let, not wanting you to do your own repair. But there's also a liability side of it that, that I look at as a business owner, um, as someone that has done products for consumers before and you know, I look at it and say, okay, well, you take your iPhone to a repair shop that's not an authorized Apple repair facility, and they do the repair on it. It might be a small repair. Let's say they replace the screen that has the, the digitizer and all that stuff, and, and they replace it with a non-approved Apple replacement part. You leave the store and it works great for two months, and that non-approved Apple replacement part makes the battery get extremely hot and the battery explodes. Now, if you've done that repair yourself and you bought the part on eBay or you know black market, whatever you wanna call it, and you've done that repair yourself and three months later the phone blows up, you're not going to tell anyone that you did a repair on that device. And so then it becomes Apple's responsibility to prove that the phone they developed did not blow up. It's a problem with the defective part that you put in that made the battery overheat and explode. So that's where there, there's a liability on the company. And that's Samsung and Apple or, or whoever. And I think that 
that's part of what Apple's going toward. I know they're doing it partly for the revenue because if you can't repair your own device, you're gonna have to go to a authorized Apple um, repair store. So Apple's getting a percentage of it probably. And if you can't repair it, they're gonna sell you a new device. But I also look at it as there's a liability, whether it's Samsung or Apple or, or whoever the device is, if you make a, if you open that device up, then it, there becomes an issue of who is actually doing the work on that device. Are they trained properly? Not saying anyone's going to do anything bad, but in an overall look of it, you know, I think Lewis Rossman does a, I, I can't, there's no way I could do what he does. He, he's, he's amazing um, in the repairs that he does. Um, but, and, and he's a, an anomaly. I mean, there are people out there like him that do that, but the majority of the people that are doing their own repairs and some of these shops that even Lewis talks about where they've done a really bad job of soldering or, you know, missing screws or anything like that, those things affect how the device works. And if it's not soldered properly, if it's a, a, a device, a piece of the, a part that's not approved by Apple, it could have issues and overheat. And, and so there's where the, the on the fence of, yes, I would like to repair my own device, but it, it becomes a liability on the company. And as a company, they, they have to look at it and go, hey, this device blew up, set somebody's car on fire. Was it a default that we built something wrong or did they do something to the device to make it do that? And so then they have to prove that it wasn't their fault. You know, with the Samsung phone, I followed that a little bit. I wasn't completely into it because I'm not, I don't use Samsung, uh, well, not the Samsung mobile devices anyway. And so the batteries were catching on fire and that's what Samsung was doing, was kind of going, okay, well, what were you doing with the phone to make that battery get hot and catch on fire? Of course, it was an issue with the battery itself or the phone, but when you're repairing your own device or when you're having someone that's maybe a pop-up shop somewhere that you know, you puncture that battery when you're putting the screws back in or just when you're trying to take it apart or you put in a part that makes the battery overheat, then it becomes an issue of the stability of the phone and the company that made the phone is now liable or has to prove they're not liable when something goes wrong. Um, when a phone catches on fire and burns up, I don't know what if they can tell the battery or whatever. It, I guess it depends on what else the phone destroys when it catches on fire. If it catches on fire in the car and the car catches on fire and the whole thing burns up, then someone like Apple or Samsung has no way to really prove that it wasn't a device, that, that it wasn't their fault. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the right to repair. I do agree that we should have the ability to repair our own device but there needs to be a, a system or something that, you know, if you're a repair store, you can buy the, the dealer parts, but you have to register what device you're actually repairing. You know, so if I was a repair store and I wanted to repair iPhones, you know, I, I go on this website, whatever it is, and say, hey, I'm a repair store, I wanna be able to repair devices, um, it's a free sign up, free registration, whatever, and then I'm now available to purchase authorized products from companies like Apple and Samsung, the real products, so that I'm not putting in wrong products and devices. And at that point, when you repair a device, you should enter the serial number for that device and just a brief description of what you did. That way, if something does go wrong, the phone catches on fire, a company like Apple or the court system or whatever it is can look at it and say, 
you know, look up that ID number, that serial number, and say, oh, well, this phone or tablet or laptop was repaired by this company, and this is what they did. There could be a possibility that they punctured the battery. They're, you know, not saying that they're going to completely use this to get out of fault for something that goes wrong, but I think that there's, you know, a, a way that we can look at it and go, okay, this serial number, the battery was replaced or the screen was replaced by so-and-so. And if you didn't use the correct part, it's it's kind of the liability of the parts place. It, it, would, it would then make it where companies wouldn't just pop up. They would actually know what they're doing like Lewis Rossman and, and, and go through and say, we're a real repair store that do things right. And this is what we've done to this device. And it doesn't have to be detailed where it goes into long details about what you did, but just a brief description. You enter the serial number, a brief description, and you hit submit. And that's registered in your account as a device that you've repaired. So that's my thought on it anyway. I uh, wanted, wanted to make this video shorter than it actually is. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, like this video if you like it, of course. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And I'm going to be making future videos on topics like this and getting back to my development tutorial videos. See you in the next one. Thanks.